Here are three mistakes all DJs need to try and avoid when first stepping up to a set of CDJs. If it's your first time in a club, at a party or an event where you are in front of some CDJs, then these things are essentials to know so you don't mess up the mix. The effects channel on a Pioneer DJM mixer responds differently to any effects that you'll be used to on a controller with software plugged in. There are a few extra settings to be aware of when setting up the effects channel to work effectively. Now, let me just show you what happens. If I just choose to apply an effect to this side, let's say I'm in the mix here, and I decide to apply an effect where there's a beat, I'm on the right channel, and I've got my echo effect set up and I start turning it up. And it doesn't sound on beat, it doesn't sound quite right. This can usually be one of the first things that, the first hurdles that DJs might come across when using the effects on a DJ and mixer. So to set this up right, what we need to do is make sure, as we have, we've selected the effect that we want to apply, in this case an echo. We also need to make sure the BPM's right. Now you can see it's flashing at the moment, and that means that the mixer is trying to determine what the BPM is. But because there's no data cable going to the back of the mixer, it's just between the two CDJs, then all it's doing is using its internal, sort of, it's got an ear, if you imagine, inside the mixer, trying to listen to what the beat of the music is. Now if I skip to this section of the track, there's not much of a repetitive beat there, so it's still struggling to determine the BPM on the auto mode. Now you'll see after a while it settles on a BPM, so we've got here 128 BPM, which is right, that's what we want. It's now flashing again, so it's trying to pick out the beat. If I go to somewhere that's got a repetitive beat, it will settle on a BPM and hopefully stay there, but as you can see, it's not always exact, maybe it's 127. So if you're struggling to get the right BPM, then you can either tap it in, and you can just literally tap along to the beat of the music, but that can take quite a while to get it exact. Or a really good little hack is we can hold tap and use the time here to move it up and down in BPM and set it manually. Let's say it's 128 there. We can also hold tap and the auto tap next to it to set a decimal place if we choose. Really good hack for getting that exact BPM built into the effects channel. Unlike on a controller where it tells the controller, it tells the software what the BPM of the song is, this CDJ is not linked to this mixer, so it cannot send that data across. There is a way to link it, but most clubs don't bother adding this cable in, so you need to know how to get this set up right when it's not linked. Okay, now we've got the BPM and the effects selected, you can see that below the beat fraction is flashing between two values. This might be something you've never come across because it's not set up on all controllers in this way. It will either be on a half beat or a quarter beat or an eighth beat. It'll be on an exact amount. But on Pioneer mixers, you can adjust the time of the effect, so the length of the effect, either by using the beat fractions or by using the timer just here. And you'll see when I move the time, it goes to this millisecond format. And we can choose right down to the milliseconds. Now for an echo, we want it to be on a, a, you know, a set beat length. If it was somewhere in between, like we had it, it's going to sound wrong, like this. And it just sounds off beat. Even though our BPM's right, it still sounds off beat. Now let's listen to what happens when I knock this down to a fraction. There we get our echo effect. If I use the time now, you can hear it adjust. And it goes out of time. Now bear in mind, if you're moving around BPMs a lot, if I changed this BPM to something different, say I've gone down to 120 BPM, you'll notice now I'll need to reset my beat fraction so that it's exact. Just always check on what beat fraction you're on that it's not flashing on two. You want to be set on a solid half, quarter, three quarters, whatever you choose, and that your tempo is set right as well. If you want to get out of tap mode, you just press this button and it goes back to the auto mode where it tries to detect the BPM. No matter what channel you've selected, it will detect the BPM or the music coming through that channel and do its best to get it right. But like I say, it doesn't always do it right and you might be mid-effect, it goes into a breakdown and then it thinks it's a different BPM and it can mess your mix up. So that's one of the first mistakes to avoid is just some of those settings within the beat effects channel, getting them set up so that they sound perfect when you come to use them. Another thing that might happen is you rock up to a club and you start mixing and you find that you've got a track playing here. And then you start mixing your next track in. Let me just 
do a pretend mix at this point. I start mixing the next track in. Imagine you're doing your EQing. Now hopefully you can hear there that I've got all my EQs set the same and my trims set the same, but this side is much louder than this side. So what's happening here is we might have knocked the crossfader or the crossfader might not be set up to our desired setting. Now how the crossfader works is let me just show you if I've got it on this crossfader curve here, which is a smooth curve. When this track's playing, listen to the volume change as I move it across. So it's much quieter there than it is there. Now, if you're mixing with the crossfader just left there because you don't use the crossfader and this setting's on, you're always going to have one song that sounds louder or you could have got to a club and the crossfader's over here and you're not sure why there's no sound coming out even though the VU meters are displaying sound and everything is meant to look like it's coming out because the crossfader is not actually in the center. Now, if you don't use the crossfader at all for scratching or cutting, I would suggest turning it off. And this is done with these switches here and putting it on through mode. So turning all the channels onto through mode. Now, the crossfader is deactivated. So if you accidentally knock it during the mix or you, know, you move it to the side, you're not gonna get drastic volume changes. So that's a mistake to avoid. If you do use the crossfader, make sure you assign it to the sides that you want. And then also choose your crossfader curve, which is here. Now, for any scratching or cutting, I would suggest having it on the sharp curve, which means as soon as it comes off one edge, it's at full volume. And it stays at that same volume all the way across. So it's just a cutting action. That's the next thing to be aware of when you step up to a set of CDJs or a club mixer. Before the last tip, I just want to make you aware of our CDJ Masterclass course, where we cover in depth the CDJ setup. So you are prepared for everything you need to know when you step up to your first club gig. These are three things to be aware of, but there were over 20 more things that you need to be aware of before stepping up to CDJs and how they differ from controllers. In this course, we cover deep dive the technical features of the CDJ setup, how to plug in anything from laptops to USB devices to using HID and DVS mode. We'll show you techniques for practicing at home as if you're on CDJs on your controller, amongst much more. If you want to see a sneak peek inside the course, just click the link for a free lesson. Let's get to that final tip. Lastly, we need to be aware of the quantize feature on CDJs. This is something that's often overlooked. Now imagine you're mixing and you decide to set up a loop. Let's say we're in the mix and we want to loop something somewhere. We might set the in point and count along. We might think one, two, three, four. And we try, press it and we don't do it right. It's really hard to get it exact. Now with quantize on, what that does is quantize will lock anything you do, such as hot cues or looping to the grid of the song. As long as that grid's right, you can then set perfect loops or set hot cues perfectly on the beat or activate hot cues perfectly on the beat. So if you've accidentally done this, you could put quantize on and then use the touch screen to force it to a four beat loop. And there you can hear it just extends that loop to as long as you need. So you've rectified that mistake. You know, there's times where it's happened to the best of us where we've forgotten to turn it on. We've set a manual loop and we've done it slightly wrong and we can rectify that quickly in the mix. Better still, we want to remember to try and toggle quantize on if we are setting manual loops. So then we can count along. One, two, three, four, and set the in and out point and it will correct any slight mistakes we make in pressing the in and out adjust. The reason why quantize is a button, it's not just on all the time, is let's say you want to do some hot cue play where you've got a hot cue and you want to do some trickery with it. But when quantize is on, you can't press it faster than one beat unless you change some of the settings in the CDJ. But you might see DJs doing things like... and creating patterns like that. Now they can't be done if quantize is on, you can change the beat fraction of the quantize, but I would suggest if you're going to be doing tricks like that, then you'll want quantize off. So you've got to remember to toggle it on and off depending on what you're doing, whether you're looping or doing finger drumming with hot cues. That might be a more advanced trick that you're not quite there yet with, but it's well worth knowing about this quantize button and making sure that if you're setting loops, I would highly recommend to have it on. 
It's also great for hot cues if you are jumping to a new point in the track and you might be a bit delayed in when you press it, it will try and jump perfectly on the beat instead. So that's the final tip, quantize to be aware of on the CDJs. And remember there is an independent one for each deck. So it's not a global one that turns on for both decks. You'll have to get used to toggling on and off for each deck. As mentioned earlier, we have a full CDJ Masterclass course to help you avoid any of these mistakes and many, many more that are covered within the course. It'll also help you get used to how to export music to a USB drive if you're using a different software or how to connect your laptop to the CDJs if you're using Serato or Virtual DJ, for example, plus loads of tips, tricks, hacks and techniques for using the CDJs plus full walkthroughs. So you've really got everything covered within that one course. Click the link to check it out. And if you enjoyed this video, please comment below which one of these tips you did not know prior to watching the video. We love to hear your feedback and please remember to subscribe as well. I'll see you in another video just like this very soon.